Hey, hey, what's going on, Vision fans? Ready Player Will here. On my last Guild Wars character tier ranking, there were some eyebrows raised that Ketone was a popular pick in a lot of the guilds. I'm here to explain why and why she can be strong, and particularly in this guild map, and, you know, and with the current meta the way it stands. So, uh, kind of getting into it, she's a, a very great duelist. Pick a 1v1 target and slot and path toward that person. She does really well in those 1v1 situations and a bunch of reasons. One, a ridiculous amount of agility where she can always uh, get the, the edge and, and the first start moving ahead of people. And she can typically lap opponents as the battle goes on. Incredible amount of evasion, so her survivability is through the roof. The mobility to get in and out, move a four and jump of three. Technically, she has Shikuchi as well as a passive, so you can get that even higher, uh, extra move and jump on both. Uh, Side note, turn self-sacrifice passive off for the build that we're going to talk about later as it pertains to Drill's Drain Force. Drain Force is a critical part of her kit here, and I'm going to explain why. This X buff to her for her Waves of Shadows, the acquired uh, AP and the single target resistance. This single target resistance is huge! That means when you're dueling someone, if you're using single target attacks, she's going to take 12% less damage on any single target attack. And then the Utsusemi upgrade, where it increases missile and magic resistance of 25% to self that's a huge buff because those are two of the most common guaranteed hit types in the game. And then finally, Drain Force is a really important part of the dueling. Whereas you do damage to the enemy, you so you just take that right in as health. So unless you're getting one shot, the Drain Force actually allows her to consistently stay alive in those duels. And we're going to get behind all the mechanics of that and why it's applicable. First, we're going to get into the Guild War map and why it caters to Ketone, where some of the smaller maps don't have the same benefits to her, but this one in particular really does. So there's enough range for up to two buffs, depends on how the enemy moves and how, how they kite. Uh, the, there's flank routes up and down the side of the map though, which these characters with a high move and jump can really exploit, and you can initiate duels because of that, I'm going to get into how. So what we're seeing here is the guild map bird's eye view, and this is a pretty standard uh, comp of attack and defense for where you're seeing Ketone. So on your attacking team, it's Zan, Mont, and Ketone, and on the defending side, it's uh, Black Rose Lana, Mont, and Dwayne. That's pretty standard. That's the current meta. What essentially is going to happen here is Ketone's going to get first move because she's going to be the fastest in the map. And she's going to move either four or five, depending on what passive you have. We're going to assume four. And the way the turn order is going to go is obviously going to lend itself to whatever agility the rest of the team has. But it's basically going to shake out something like this. But Ketone's second turn, there is a very hard hill here of two that you need jump of. And then another one right here as well, which most characters can't get by, but Ketone can bypass it altogether. So the next one, probably something akin to this. And Black Rosalina is going to be drawn in by her presence because Mont isn't close and in range yet. So you've effectively created a 1v1 duel on this side of the map more often than not. This is really important because uh, she's got the unit resistance, she's got magic resistance, she's got drain force, she's got the evasion. And we're going to get into the actual stats on Black Rosalina's accuracy against a regular ketone build in just a second here long story short though you you essentially allow black rosalina to stay back in the fight a little bit longer and create a, a more lucrative uh 2v2 matchup here with the rest of the characters and waste some of her skills you know if she can waste her limit break early on ketone that's a huge benefit for, for the rest of the battle the second part of ketone makes her so strong obviously and she's always had this but now it's just like top of the charts is the agility and the evasion so Overall, and I have a whole video going over what these stats mean. I'll link it below in the description and the card at the end. Her evasion, she's technically the third, or the, she's the second most evasive UR unit in the game. Third, if you include Shadow Links. And by a significant amount, there's really like five or six evade characters that are, you know, by the percentage definition at the moment. And her agility is second in the game only to Nivlu. She's at 69 compared to Nivlu's 71, but 69 is tied for second. So tons of agility, tons of evasion. We're going to get into the actual math of this now. So that matchup we were just talking about, Black Rose Lena versus Ketone. This is a pretty standard Black Rose Lena build. Uh, Magistral Rod, Garmia Cloak, or TMR. This is the Bahamut Esper. And this Vision card actually gives Black Rose Lena a ton of accuracy. So this is not a scuffed Black Rose Lena. This is a Elena with a lot of accuracy imbued in her already. And then this is a pretty standard Ketone build for a Drain Force build, which we're going to get into the mechanics in like literally a minute here. I have the... Chocolate Flan Earrings on here for the 25% HP buff. Evasion, this is the Odin Esper. Theoretically, you could have the Tetra Sylphid Esper, but if you're running Zazan and Ketone, only one of them can take it. And since Ketone is running the Drain Force build, you're going to want Odin for the Man Killer. We'll get into why. So this is a pretty, and then uh, includes the external Titan Vision card for the extra 20% evasion. That's assumed that someone else in the party has it. 
the math behind it all, if you take Elena's dexterity, the luck, the accuracy, the, the accuracy rate is 247, and this is the way, and again, the whole video explains this, then you take the agility, the luck, and the evasion for Ketone, that's her evasion rate, one minus the other, the hit rate of any non-guaranteed hit for Black Rose Elena is only 24%. So she only has a 24% hit chance to hit Ketone, which means great things for that dueling potential, where unless she's using her guaranteed hit, more often than not, she's going to be missing the other large attacks on Ketone. Now, the really important thing about the duel for this Drain Force ability, the way it works, takes 37% of Ketone's HP and drains it from the enemy. And that's it. That's as simple as that. You ignore slash resistance, you ignore defense, ignore barriers. You literally just take 37% of the HP and drain it from the enemy. Now, there is an important way to upgrade this. Uh, you have to add killers, particularly and really only uh, human killers. If you add human killers to this, the way it works is it adds the human killer percent to the drain force percent. So 25% human killer on Odin, add it to the 37% of the ability. That means Ketone will take 62% of her HP. It's literally that simple. Just take the HP times 0.62. That's how much damage is going to drain from the enemy. Titan doesn't affect it because uh, drain force is not a physical attack. So you don't get the 25 man killer from the upon physical attack. Unfortunate, but important note. And then finally, unit resistance does factor into this because technically Drain Force is a unit attack. So we'll get into that scenario. The difficulties in running it and why you don't see it very often, it's really threefold. Number one, you need lots of skills turned off so that the AI constantly knows to prioritize it instead of ones that it might have AoE and ones that might have chaining ability, ones that have um, status effects on it, things of that nature. So you have to gimp your character a little bit to make it work. The second thing, it's a height zero attack, so you have to be exactly on the same level as your enemy, which isn't always possible on maps, but this one it is for sure. And then finally, most soldier units don't have very high HP. So even if they end up doing Drain Force, even though it's not, number one, not going to do a lot of damage because they have low HP, but number two, they're probably going to die faster than you would have liked, that you're not going to get as many Drain Forces in as you would have liked. But because Ketone has so much evasion, she can survive for so long, she's going to get a ton of of drain forces in, which actually will add up more materially than your average soldier sub job. So I'm actually gonna show you an example in a walkthrough. So I made this comp, I have King Mon, I have Titus, I have him absolutely stacked for defense. I have Ketone with the build we were just talking about. And I'm essentially gonna show you okay. the math and the way this works out here. I have Ketone uh, just using bells to start. Give me a moment here. And so just showing her stats, she's at 6,096 HP. As you can see this down here, that's where the starting eight, eight, uh, HP. Drain Force is 37%, Odin Killer is 25%. So I'm telling you right now, the Drain Force percentage 62 times 6096 is this amount of damage, 3780. And you're gonna notice when she goes to target King Mont, it's off by one, 3779, that's the amount. That's, and it's going to absorb all of that as health. And it's actually gonna do the same thing for Titus, despite the fact that totally different resistances doesn't matter because Ketone's HP is the same attacking both of them. Yeah. The second interesting thing here, Debilitator, which is unit resistance down for an enemy, is going to multiply that total damage by 1.3. Now, at this stage in my mock testing here, Ketone's health has gone down because the effect of the earrings wore off, so you can see she's only at 54.99. But regardless, I'm, I'm here proving you the math is still the same. So taking that 54.99 HP, the percentage of the train force, the total damage would be 3409. Well, you multiply it by 1.3 because of the unit resistance in peril, 4432. That's a lot of attack on a King Mont to absorb that back as health. It's one of the reasons why you can duel with people quite often is that, yeah, as long as you're not getting one shot, you're more than likely gonna take your health right back from them. And if they have physical barriers, if they ha have high defense, if they have high slash resistance, it just doesn't matter. Finally, the vision card synergy alongside Tazan makes her really strong in this map where there's technically three evade units on the earth at the moment. Winter Venera needs the X upgrade to really be uh, competitive, but uh, whatever. But Secrets of the Hardy obviously benefits the evasion for both her and Tazan. Uh, Titan does the same with the increased evasion of 20% of the party. Dreams of Heroism is a great card to put on King Mont, who kind of acts as a, a mule in this instance. But if you recall, Dreams of Heroism actually does have benefits for Mont. He'll get magic resistance of 10 and agility of 5. And then the Earth Party will get AoE resistance of 20. So all those Black Rosalina AoE attacks, the whole Earth Party is going to get 
20% extra resistance against it, HP of 13%, so Ketone's going to get more HP for the Drain Force attacks and the TP, whatever. But you get what I'm saying. Her with Cezanne, there's a great amount of synergy with the Vision card since they effectively work really similarly. So the conclusions that 12% innate unit resist, she can self-heal via the Drain Force to constantly stay alive, the range to move in and out very quickly with that duel, so she might, you know, keep Helena's attention for a turn or two, and then once King Mont's in range, Ketone's gonna get the fuck out and go attack him instead, and all of a sudden, you know, change the whole reflection of the battle because Black Rose Lane is too far away now, and you get the point. Uh, Uchisemi is a great buff for if you can get it off alongside the Zizabels because Drain Force isn't a cheap ability. It's 20 AP. You want to be able to spam it if possible. Uh, the Evasion and then the great synergy with Zon and the other Vision cards. So that's it in a nutshell. I hope this was insightful. I know the Drain Force build is one that flies under the radar and is quite honestly the most important thing to make she, making her function the way she does currently, in addition to the Guild War map and just some of the EX upgrades and what Zazan brings to the table that didn't get in Japan, so it changes the profile of the Earth units overall. So hopefully uh, you learned something, this is informative, and I'll talk to you all soon.